me angry. It got me thinking. It got me thinking about the system against the little guy and all of the things that come with that kind of stuff. Um, thanks for coming today. Oh, thank you. That was so fun. I love it when people pick up on um, the content of work. And I think that's like one of the things that I really gravitated to Christian for was like, we just started immediately vibing about how people um, don't really like have this visual literacy about our um, political reality. And and right. kind of like, I see that in Christian's work as well. Like how, you know, it's like, oh, well I'm painting Christina Aguilera, but also with the CIA logo because it's like her music is being used in Guantanamo. And it's right. like, people don't necessarily know that, but then you can put these symbols together in order to enlighten and like help people understand what our government is doing. Well, it reminds me a lot of like the old um, symbols of the saints, where you were supposed to be able to identify the story, what he's holding in his hand. A lot of that kind of symbolist nature in your paintings reminds me of old religious paintings that you were supposed to see all of the symbols. You know, he's got a raven in his hand. You know, you're supposed to know that that means rebirth or, you know, something yes. like that. And I really like all of the artifacts. It's just like with Christian's work. I really like all of the artifacts, all the things to be found. Um, how, how did the show in Los Angeles happen? Is that from New York? Did, did it start here and go out there? Uh, there were some works that um, I had been trying to show here. Yeah. Um, especially the portrait of the Dulles brothers as the two-headed monster. Right. And actually, um, you know, a good friend, uh, Jeremy Maldonado, who runs Giovanni's room out there was like, you know, into taking the risk really of showing this work because, um, you know, here I was getting a lot of like, you know, I try to show it in a studio visit or something like, hey, can we put this in a gallery here? People were like, who are these grandpas? Right. Just like no connection to the, like the aura of intensity of these figures. Yeah. And Jeremy's like, no, let's do it. Like, let's let's go, let's push some buttons. I was in a gallery recently um, that was a lot of uh, collage work, a lot of stuff from the past. And um, I saw, do you know Squeaky Fromm is? I saw Squeaky Fromm in one of the photographs who um, famously was a Manson girl and went to jail for trying to show Gerald Ford a handgun, in her words. <laughs> And I think she later did some time for that. Uh, she wasn't trying to assassinate. She wasn't trying to assassinate him. She was trying to show him the handgun. But um, you know, and it's not. I'm not telling the story as one of those like, oh, kids don't know anything because there were people in the gallery my age as well. I turned around. I was just excited. I'm a weirdo. So I turned around to the group of people behind me and said, "It's Squeaky Frog," because there was no. It didn't have her name or anything. It was. It was something contrasting, similar. And I said, look, it's Squeaky Fromm. And I just kind of looked at everybody and everybody just looked at me. And I was like, Squeaky? See anybody Squeaky Fromm? And they're all like, no, <laughs> we don't know. You know, so there, there, is, there is some kind of literacy going on. But I was thinking um, before the show started, is it a historical literacy? Or is it um, these things don't, are really taken out of context now? Squeaky Fromm can exist uh, as a character outside of the story if you don't know it. So maybe it's not even a historical context. It's a, 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 a icons, a bibliography of icons that we're supposed to know about our American past, you know? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think maybe a lot of people don't get that. Do you think in New York it's just like too political for people in New York and people in New York are hyper political? Well, it's funny because a few years ago, the the same work that I'm doing now was like, you know, people were writing about it and they were like, this is, this is just like the times we're living in. Yeah. Everything is political right now and this work is political, so this is perfect. And then something happened this year where it was like, put it away. No conversations. We'll, we'll see you later. Right. Um, it still is political, but we're not anymore. Right. There's a weird thing going on right now where we're kind of between the acts, which is something I've said on the show before. We know that next year is going to be different, don't we all know? And then, you know, a couple of years ago we were in it and we're kind of just in the belly between people know, maybe people I kind of think know it's coming. And well, they we're don't in the necessarily dip of the to... recession. Yeah. We're, dip, we're dipping down. We're in the recession. We're between yeah. the elections. We're kind of, 
people are kind of don't really want to deal with it right now, right? Is that got something to do with it? Almost like it's a fun summer. Please don't bother us with the historical narrative. We don't mm -hmm. want to know where we're going. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I don't want to think about nuclear brinksmanship. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Is there have been any <laughs> other time when um, conversations about authority and the CIA? I mean, like, this seems like the exact time that we should be talking about these things. This doesn't seem like a... Uh, I don't. I don't think ten years ago was a more prevalent. It was a better time to talk about uh, power structures. I think now is probably the best time, given where we are. You know, I don't know. When I say it stuff like is. that, it is it is, is it always this? It oh yeah. There's it's always it, having a constant uh, conversation about the nature of the system that we live inside of is something that you can do for your whole life. It's not something you only do in college. It's not something you only do um, when there is an election coming up. But that's it's, what people listen, right? right? Like after COVID, people wanted to talk about the security state. Are you allowed to trap me in my home or force things on me? Like people were starting to get, especially afterward, not during it, but afterward, people welcome some kind of conversation, political conversation like that. Now, not so much. Now we're getting a little farther away. That door is closing for some of those conversations, what do you think? Well, I think that it's it's kind of like if you're in a low enough strata of our society, you um, kind of maybe feel that um, you got screwed. Right. And just like having a stimulus check didn't really fix the fact that so many things got broken or were shown to be broken. like. You know, we kind of had this social contract that it was like, oh, actually, yeah, our healthcare system's a mess. Yeah, we can't get like any of the equipment we need to go around fast enough, even though we have like a, the most wealth ever. Right. And it's only working for a few people. And, you know, these messages are always like a constant thing going on for people who are living that reality, but the conversation only gets had by um, amplified voices that are like, okay, well now, you know, we're on CNN yeah. and the donors say it's okay to like mention that there's like an issue with like what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel like there's, all, there's times when, mostly after they've been hurt, where people wanna talk about things. And that whether it's in their personal life or in a political way or whatever, people get burned and then they're willing to reflect on, on what's gone on. And then sometimes um, any kind of artwork that brings up a discussion is not welcome um, if a person's in a good place. What do you think of that? Um, do you find Right do you, on. <laughs> do, you, do you find that the happier people are, the more they enjoy discussing the trials of life, you know, or serious work? Do you think that goes along with being in a good mood? I don't know how to answer that question. Um, There's a lot of questions about power structures and identity and who we are underneath mm -hmm. those structures in your work. People who always like talking about that, or do you think that it takes a certain space for someone to be in? And maybe, maybe a space to buy something. They're in that space mm -hmm. where they want to hear what's behind the story. But what about generally? About I mean, thing? usually I make them listen <laughs> when they come to yeah. the studio. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. So, no, good. Yeah. <laughs> so I a little like, you know, shove it down their throats. I think that was, you know, someone said that like, was that Bush or Cheney or so? Also like, we have to shove democracy down their throat or <laughs> right. so. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of what her answer was. No, you don't stop talking about you it. You don't it stop talking about it. Doesn't about it doesn't matter if people want to do it. It doesn't matter. Um, I think like, you know, as um, Lucia said, like, um, you know, galleries, you know, sometimes, you know, they are really like, you know, oh yeah, we want political work, you know, because that is how we signal to the outer world that we are like engaged and we right. on the right side of history. And, you know, it's, and it borders a little bit on like virtue signaling, you know. Sure. And we're the gallery that does political work, or, you know. Or well, whatever. and then and then it's like, oh, we also need to pay our rent. 
Absolutely, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You know, like, I mean, showing sometimes is, you know, good, but then, like, you know, selling stuff. Like, I mean, who wants to have, like, a huge portrait of Bashar al-Assad, you know, at home? (laughs) Right. You know, and, I mean, I would. I would, you know. Um, I have three at home, actually. (laughs) Um, So, I think, like, I mean, Lucia and I, we talked um, a few weeks ago about, you know, art's possibility to be transgressive and to really push some buttons and really go there where it hurts. And, um, you know, because this is like how people start conversations, have um, debates and, um, you know, but these are like not like the easiest subjects, you know, they are always like polarizing and, and you might also offend people or, um, like I'm working right now on a painting um, where I'm painting um, the Mohammed cartoons. Yeah. Um, the Charlie Hebdo cover? Um, not the Charlie Hebdo. It was like actually in, 2000, in 2005, um, a Danish newspaper yeah. published um, for the very first time the Mohammed cartoons. And that sparked huge outrage in the... Um, uh, Muslim community around the globe. And you're hoping maybe once again, there'll be some. (laughs) And I think what was interesting, like, you know, back then, like even, you know, in 2005, then the conversation started, like, what is like, you know, legitimate to like, you know, show and not to show. I think this is when it started, um, like this whole thing of like, okay, um, how sensitive do we have to be towards certain, you know, to communities, each to each right. other, but also like what are the, you know, achievements of, uh, you know, the so-called Western world, you know, that we can, you know, mock things and that we can like, uh, you know, set higher and we can show whatever we want without, you know, the risk of being persecuted. No, we can't. And <laughs> but no, we can't. Isn't 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 one of the things going on there with the Muslim cartoons is that the Muslim community feels like there are other communities you wouldn't do that to, or you wouldn't you wouldn't go to the mat to show that you could stand up to other communities. And that part of their part of part of their um, grievance there is to say, look, you're not going to publish any cartoons making fun of some of the other victim victim groups. There are other groups that you're not going to do this to. Why us? Or, you know. And what they don't what's realize the meeting? is that Westerners are sacrilegious by nature. Yeah. Yeah. Or always, you know, dissenting d- around the outside, pulling the middle apart. You know, isn't that part of like Western kind of art identity is to always be pulling away at the middle, deracinating it around and separating it out? You know, that is not exactly what goes on in some of the acceptable right is, is that what you mean is that we're when you say we're sacrilegious we're looking to tear down every all the, the idols even we create right we have a cycle where we're... i th- i think we have mystified like the trappings of our own market in a way that makes that into a new religion sure. and there's a lot of evidence that shows like we put religious fervor into capitalism. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like more recently than people think even. Yeah. And you can't criticize that. Like we're trying to criticize it. You but we can't do anything really to change it or to move it or you know, we can't affect anything about it, but we can say, oh, foolish religion, you're not a, you know, oh, you can't draw oh, pictures of your deities right. or something. Oh, well, I can. Mew, mew, mew. And you know what? Right. I'll sell it for a dollar. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. 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 But then it's like, whoa, whoa, guys, but dollars, they're important and they mean a lot. OK, right. we have to protect them. You know, it's also like the, the worldwide Muslim community doesn't know that the Westerners are doing this to each other all the time. That it's not about them. And we're, you know, mocking each other and doing it to each other and selling each other out for five dollars. Well, except it is about them when we're when when we're just like destroying the infrastructure in places where Muslim communities right. are from. No, that's true. Do you think that is, is that's also part of it? Like the um, it's not a time period devoid of war. And so the cartoons are. The cartoons are a part of the war. A part of the war, right. I'm talking Absolutely, about. yeah. Soft power. 
Soft power. Soft yes. power. Yes. <laughs> is I think anything I think not it, part of the war, I wonder? <laughs> war is total. No, I'm, you know, I mean that. I, I yeah. Mean that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We're in it. All of our money's going to it again. What do you think? You also, um, the, you have the dullest painting, and you also have another one. I think it's maybe a little more in the past. Has the, um, like, the Nazi rocket inventor. Oh. The guy we brought, the Operation Paperclip yeah. guy. Yeah, Werner von Braun is a character in the paintings. Yeah. What is it about these things? These This stuff's from a really long time ago. What is it about the stuff that still, does it still push people's buttons because there's still something there we're not admitting to? Like, we, yeah. we all know about the Nazi scientists and the NASA and the rockets. How come that's still, that's still stuck in people's craw? And what, why is that? Well, I think okay. it's just that people don't know. Because when I show someone like, oh, okay, here's this figure, he started, you know, okay, Werner von Braun came over here, got his um, makeover by Disney so that he could be a palatable person. Right. Like, oh, no war crimes to speak of. Just a cool rocket scientist. And people don't all know that. They don't all know, oh, well, this person used um, concentration camp victims and for, for, like, labor to make these rockets. And they did horrible tests on people to find out things about pressure and on the human body to go into space. And all his colleagues as well were also brought here and and dressed up like doctors. And then just the fact that they're seated in NASA, it's like, okay, Von Braun made the the first iteration of the NASA program. Right. And we look at NASA now as being this good thing. We're like, oh my God, NASA, we we want it to be funded. We want it to go and explore space because we've seen this other evil, which is like, oh, what about like SpaceX? You know, the private companies are trying to take away our NASA. They're going to take space away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And it's like, uh, okay, but okay, we like we're well aware that like privatizing these endeavors takes things away from our public domain and we don't get to share in the joys of space or something. Something. But or something. I don't really know. Like there's not a lot out in God, space for so me. So much but... nihilism with all the space stuff, you know, it's yeah. like um yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Now yeah. it's like, okay, well there's these evil billionaires that are trying to go to Mars for themselves. To repopulate or something. Wait, is this a new thing? Well, it's, it's something that Musk talks about. People talk about all the time. I mean, you know, I, I don't, I think that all of that stuff is adventurous nihilism. Like, oh, you know, you can't get Earth to work, so we're going to go farm rocks in space one day. Yeah. We literally, we cannot get along. We can't get the water clean. We can't get anything to work. So I'm imagining, I don't know, another planet. You know, that, that kind of, it's a nihilism. It's like really bad. Like, it's a lot worse than getting on a ship and going to another continent and destroying a bunch of people. Now we're just going to set sail into space. <laughs> you know? Except- God forbid there's anybody out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think let him try. Yeah. <laughs> come let and take try. it. Come and, come and take it. It's going to be on the side of the spaceship. <laughs> but she, these, I, um, I was telling you before the show about, I was thinking about the Dulleses. I was thinking about the post-war paradigm and the intelligence services on the way over here. And I was angry about it just by myself ruminating on the train. So these, these things still do have some power. You know, these stories are very present for us right yeah. now. Yeah. You know, try to, you know, illustrate the people who started these things that we're struggling with now. Like, okay, the, yes. you know, Alan Dulles started the CIA. Right. Werner von Braun started NASA. Yeah. Uh, these people, they came in, they changed things here. You you think that we might be at the end of that cycle? Like the, nobody's starting anything. The Nazi in? rocket CIA shadow government fucking thing. I know I'm not saying it's over, but I'm saying that like for a long time, nobody even knew these facts. Now we have presidential candidates, one running who says he's being accosted by the shadow government. Oh, and the other one is um, an inheritor to a family name. It's very much connected to all of this. And he's watched his family members get their brains blown out for the last 50 years. That's kind of the end of this cycle, isn't it? Where we started with, who's Alan Dulles? Why does Kennedy have a giant hole in his head? Mm-hmm. To, hi, I'm a presidential candidate, the descendant of the man whose brains you blew out. Yeah. You know, and also, you know, it kind of seems like we're, we're, we're washing, washing it all out now. 